It has long been the center of the Ohio State campus, now home to millions of books, hundreds of newspapers, and over 30 flat screen TVs. The main library is once again the jewel of the campus. The library opened in January of 1913. When I was going to school here, I came to the library just a few times and the building did not appeal to me at all. It was claustrophobic and dark and I found better places to study. The renovation brought about a number of critical changes. In fact, I'm fond of telling people that if you remember the Thompson Library before it closed, if that's your point of reference, you're going to get lost in the new library. I'm thrilled that the university finally has a library building that reflects the stature of the university itself as one of the leading public universities in the country. It's not a story of individual study carols as much now as it is small groups getting together, interacting uh, during the learning and research process, and I think this building feeds that. We simply recognize that people learn differently than they did 100 years ago. And we think it's flexible enough for the learning of the future. Look at this. Look at that. That's awesome. In renovating this building, we're very concerned about restoring the historic places. The grand reference room on the east side of the building, uh, original from the 1912-1913 era, which was cut in half in the 60s in the quest for more square footage. We restored the 30-foot tall ceilings. We removed the floor, which had been put in there in the mid-1960s, which basically destroyed the aesthetics of that uh, room. That has been maybe the single most rewarding piece of the whole project. This is gorgeous. No way. You gotta be kidding me. I know I'm gonna feel smarter just by being in here. Look at this statue at the end. That's awesome. We also built a brand new facade to the west for meetings and for, uh, for casual uh, reading. We have not one but two atria. Our stacks that used to be dark uh, are now currently encased in glass. It needed to look like a part of this continuum from 1912. We got that continuous feeling, but we also managed to range from the quiet, scholarly uh, 1912 into the building to the much more social, active part on the west side. If you're looking for the best view of the entire campus, come to the 11th floor. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is great. There's a rocking chair over. <gasps> wow. I've never seen Columbus like this before. It's a wonderful place to have a meeting. It's going to be open for anybody to look at the uh, many sites on the Oval and all else across campus. We had a fundraising campaign that uh, stretched out over, uh, over several years, uh, including a major transfer of funds from the athletic department. You think about the library, it touches so many lives and so many people in so many different ways, but it really doesn't have alumni. It doesn't have a constituency that graduates from the library. We had inside information that it probably would not be able to start construction if it didn't get a significant gift at a certain level to get it off the ground. We really focus hard on not just being self-supporting, but being a financial asset to the institution to help all 60,000 students here. So we knew that someone needed to step up and at the end of the day, we knew it was the right thing to do. Seeing the library come together, seeing the furniture and equipment come in every day is, is really an exciting thing. I have to come at the building from a different direction every day to keep enjoying it over and over again. This renovation has transformed uh, this weary icon uh, into a stellar uh, monument uh, for the university, the university learning process, uh, and for the activity of, uh, of research. It's unbelievable. This is not your old library. 
Uh, this is a place where you can come and get things done. And so I'm really excited for our students when they come back. I can't wait to see the action. When we return, Smart at Cars sparks the local economy.